Deborah, thank you. People have been talking about it. We're going to continue talking about it. The host of Facing South Florida, Jim DeFiti, is joining us now. And Jim, what was your overall impression of last night's debacle debate? Well, I think it was just that, that it, was, uh, it wasn't just a debacle, it was embarrassing. It was one of those moments that, uh, that you know, you, you, you cannot feel a sense of pride as an American watching what took place on that debate stage. And, and you have to wonder what the rest of the world thinks when they watch something like that take place. You know, the, the president came in with a, apparently with a strategy of just sort of like uh, like being a brawler and, and, and trying to throw Biden off his game. But what he did was he just comes across as a bully and that plays well to his base. But I don't think in the long run it served him well at all. You know, I, I know that he says he won every poll. That's not true. The only poll that I saw he won was a Telemundo poll, which was a Twitter poll of fans just sort of echoing their support. It wasn't a scientific survey at all. So it, it, the whole thing was a mess. And, and I agree with the CBS News polling that sort of shows that, that most people were frustrated or disgusted. I, I'm still trying to figure out who the 17 percent were who think that they were better informed as a result of last night's debate, because I don't know anyone who could feel that way right now. And Jim, uh, what do you think about what the campaigns are feeling today? Do you think that they believe they achieved what they needed to do? You know, so let's start with uh, the president. Uh, the president needed to come into this debate to try to change the dynamic of the race. So in terms of a big picture, he needs to move this away from being a referendum about himself to drawing a comparison with Joe Biden. His apparent strategy was to try to make it seem as if Joe Biden is weak and feckless and can't really hold his own and, and is controlled by the left. But Donald Trump did so much in way of attacking that, that I don't think he was able to achieve that you know and it's certainly if you're if you know where Donald Trump is losing in most polling is among women and suburban voters if you're a woman or someone in the suburbs I don't know that you looked at that and said to yourself that's the guy who I want to vote for that's the guy I gave a chance in 2016 and I'm ready to stay on that train and try a little bit more in 2020 now from the Biden side of things he needed to show that he could actually last through an hour and a half long debate given that the the president and others have been sort of suggesting that he doesn't have the mental acuity or wherewithal. Now, let's be candid. Joe Biden did not have a great night last night. His most effective moments was when he talked directly into camera. But, you know, there were times where he got into the back and forth with Donald Trump, and that didn't serve him well. But I actually think that in some ways, Joe Biden got stronger as the night went on, whereas most people were thinking he was going to get weaker. So Joe Biden survived the contest. And I guess from that standpoint, and since Donald Trump did and do better, you know, it's actually a win for Joe Biden because this is not going to change any of the polls. And the polls right now have the president behind, and he needed to use this debate, this debate more than any other debate, to change things around. Well, he has two more debates uh, coming up. There's also a vice presidential debate uh, next week. Do you think we will see more of the same when the candidates debate in Miami in the next two weeks? Well, and just to, to the point that you made, yes, there are two more debates, but given the nature of the way people are voting, more than 1.2 million people across the country have already cast votes. In the state of Florida, more than 130,000 votes have already been cast in the state of Florida. So every week that goes by, hundreds of thousands of more votes are going to be cast. So that's why this first debate was so important. Now, do you, do more directly to your question about the second debate, I do think there will be some differences with the second debate in the sense that it's a town hall. I think it's a lot harder to do what Donald Trump did last night when you're in an audience with talking directly to voters. It seems that that just that won't play well at all if he tries those same things. Now, the debate commission is saying that they may try certain things, you know, like, for instance, maybe cutting off mics. I'm not optimistic that that's going to make any real change or difference, you know, in it. I just think that the idea that a town hall might have more of a calming influence on both candidates. Yeah, Chris Wallace mentioned that even cutting the mics, the other person's mic likely would have picked it up anyway and still would have been a distraction. So it'll be interesting to see what they figure out for the next time around. Jim DeFiti, thanks so much for your insight this afternoon.